Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today's journey takes us to a place that most people do not know. It is Papakaleo, the oldest homestead on Oahu, Hawaiian homestead. And so we have a lovely, lovely visitor, or two visitors, in fact, <laughs> my new best friend. <laughs> Emma yes. Le Momi Wright. Right. And her son. Lino. Lino. Kaniala Wright. Kaniala. Kaniala? Kaniala. Kaniala. And they're they're here because I had an experience uh, a couple months ago. A dear friend of mine, uh, Paulie Jennings, passed away. Great Hawaiian. Everything I know about Hawaii, I learned from working for her. And it occurred to me at that funeral how many Hawaiian kupuna are passing, leaving us. And we need to talk to them. We need to hear their stories. We need to know, this is Hawaii. How come we don't know this? So I asked Lionel if he would bring his mother so we can talk about Papa Kaleo. Can we see Papa Kaleo? Do we no. have we have Very there busy. it is. That is gorgeous. Now that's looking down from the top of the mountain, is it? Yeah, so that right there uh, looks like it's it's um, a view from um um Punch Bush. Punch Bush Punch Cemetery, yeah. And yeah. It's one of those um wide wide, wide angle yes. ranges. Yeah. Where there it is. Now as you go up the mountain to punch bowl, you will see the sign on the side of the road there. Yes, it come on my right. Welcome to Papa Cola. Yes. yes, there it is. Now, so right there, you can see that um, there's oh. actually three homesteads um, in um, this area. Papa Cola is is the one that people know of now, but we're actually part of Kevalo, which is the actually bottom. the land division, and Kalavahine is the right. newest of the three homesteads. So we have Papakolea, Kalavahine, and Kevalo, and they all kind of make up our homestead area. What, what do you mean by homestead? The Hawaiian homestead is basically uh, federal land that was put aside for Hawaiians um, when it was created with the Hawaiian Homestead Act. Mm -hmm. um, it was for 50 percenters, so you needed to be 50 percent Hawaiian or more to live on the land. So kind of similar, which people don't like and Hawaiians don't like to be compared to, but similar to like an Indian reservation. Well, of course, that's the way they think. In 1921, of course, what yes. else would you think, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what they did to the Indians. Why not? Uh, you know. Okay. Yeah, totally. But, you know, for, for us, we're very lucky and fortunate to be living on Hawaiian homestead land. Yes. And we appreciate that. So you were born there? I was... On, on Papakolea? No, not no. in Papakolea, in Queens Hospital. Well, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> in Honolulu. Yes. And then um, I was given to, uh, you know, I was going to say salvation, I'm not sorry. social services. Um, I'm the seventh of nine children. Oh, wow. And when they had me, when my mom was pregnant with me, my third oldest sister was having heart problems. She passed away, I'm not sure, before I was born or after. But she passed away right around that, that time. So social services came into the app and already saw my mom with a small house and plenty mouths to feed. And they, they put me in foster home to, you know, try to find out where they can put me permanent. Oh. But this foster home, I stayed at five different homes. Hawaiian? Nope. Oh. No, that's why I can get along with pretty much different types of people because I've been around them since I was little. And I, I have no idea of racism until I went to Oklahoma. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's that. With <laughs> 66. Oh, boy. Well, 1966, you went I graduated over. in June, and I left the islands uh, in July, August around there. I went to Oklahoma City. <laughs> Guthrie, Oklahoma. 
What in the world are you doing in Oklahoma? They had um, about three, yeah, three or four different uh, Job Corps centers. One was in California, must have been full. Uh, then the next one was in Arizona, must have been full. And <laughs> brought us down to Guthrie, Oklahoma. And then the other, the other ones was Texas and the southern state. Alabama, I think, was, yeah. So you were in Job Corps? Yeah, for what? about 16 months. Oh, wow. I was in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Guthrie, yeah. Oklahoma. It's an old town. That sounds... Historical town of Oklahoma City. Really? Yeah, that's what we found out. And I was so proud of that because, they, you know, they've had a, you first, and most of the girls weren't from that area. Most of them was from cities in the East Coast. And then was us nine girls from Hawaii. And well, they probably never met anybody from Hawaii either. No. No. <laughs> no. And they know where Hawaii was. They wanted was. us to speak our, our language. <laughs> they want you to speak your language. Our, our language, yeah. Ah, go for broke, bro. <laughs> they said, what's that? That's a native tongue. My tongue is native. <laughs> And so they, they, they called me the joker. Nothing passed me by without people laughing because what you can be sad about. So a lot of the island girls who couldn't stand being away from home within six, six months to 10, 10 months, yeah. that first year, they were already heading home. What did you do at Job Corps? When I first started, I, when I first got there, they laid all these different courses that you, they can teach you. And I was into art. I said, oh, I want to do something in the art world. And just so happens, it was a magazine or something, and they were talking about commercial arts and how you can go to school, you know, go beyond high school and the community college or whatever to gain more experience in drawing, different types of media. And I thought, oh, wow, I like to do that. But um, my mind got... Heard one way, but <laughs> so I came home pregnant. Oh, <laughs> she learned the skill. <laughs> and my mom, damn, I was kind of worried because you know I'm not the only one that had babies out of wedlock, but I kind of draw went on that line <laughs> with sisters and cousins. You know, oh, what the heck? <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so I stayed home with my mom, and she helped me raise him. That's a that's a big one there. Yeah, and Granny's boy, and yeah. he was Granny's boy up until how old? Still, yeah, how old was that? Well, yeah, if they can, he can, she can remember you. <laughs> your face. Well, who that man over there standing up? That's his grandson. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so you weren't in Oklahoma long? How, no, no about 16 months. Then went to Guthrie, uh, Oakland, California, right around the hippie days. Mm -hmm. So you know what I learned then. <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco, free to be. Yes. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> so yeah, I was there and then came home with him. What? Now, back to being Hawaiian after all of that. Mm. What, what part of it was Hawaiian? <laughs> yeah, what part of that my, was all... My dad's family was pretty big. Tutu spoke Hawaiian and broken English. Papa, John Whitney Kaulala Outright Sr. Tough name, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that was the oh. mayor of Papa Kolea. Uh. But he worked for the Board of Water Supply. And what it is was he would turn off and on the pipes. So only daytime pipes be on. So you only pay for the time you use it. That makes sense. Yeah. So he made it easy for the for the homesteaders. You come up here, you you sign up for the lot, and then you pay a certain amount of money for your lease once a month, and then you you know then they work on the utilities. My papa worked for the board of water supply, so he made it easy for the community to get their rations of water. And things went on after that. But so you've lived there since since coming back to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens in Papakalea? What, what 
What makes but it history. different than any other homestead? Uh, homestead. Hawaiian homestead. What makes it different? Because people say it is. Now, what makes it different? Well, for, first, uh, if you, I'll add in, in, is that we're actually the, um, the, the third homestead to be created. The first was Molokai. Yes. And the second was Nanakuli. Mm -hmm. and they actually ran in front of us. <laughs> they jumped in front yeah. of us. And then oh. Apokolea was actually the third. Um, yeah, but then, you know, the next thing is that Papu Kole, I mean, we're, we're the only homestead or Hawaiian homestead that's in town. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in the city limits. And so, you know, we're, we're a little bit different. The, the other homesteads kind of tease us because we're in the city limits. And we're, mm -hmm. we're like the townies of the Hawaiians. But, you know, we kind of like yeah, that. We're, yeah, like, yeah. we're like 10 minutes away from downtown. From everywhere, yes. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yes. half an hour, yeah, from anywhere else. So it's, And it's it made really cool sense place. because most of my uncle them going to school went not to public school went to all these other St. Louis. Mm -hmm. St. Louis for boys was tough, and they liked that. My papa, right, he liked that. I think Tutu did too. But for the girls, he just went public school. And then you get home, and you're so lazy, and you do what you girls do. That's yes. It. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I, want, I want you to mention how, how many, how many um, kids did papa have? Papa, right? Yeah, how, how many did they have? I think altogether 14. How many boys and how many girls? Well, the ones I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's seven boys because the girls are pretty rough, you know. My, my aunties, oh my gosh. <laughs> they did us to the max. And they're proud. And I'm proud that they're proud because, hey, that's what makes us too. But you, yeah, but you had some famous people from Papa Kaleo. Musicians. Yes. 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 Danny Kalikini. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it's Janokia. Okay, I'm they? sorry. Yes. Oh, I should have said her name first. <laughs> yes. Shame on your girlfriend. Yeah, no, that's and, the one I remembered. Yes, yes everybody remembers that remember, to yes. 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 Yes, she got her son, her grandson, them, granddaughter, them. They're, they're in that area. They're still there. Yeah. They, My, they're in the Hawaiian me. music. Yes. For, for me, I was, I was named after Danny Kalikini. My middle name, Kaniala, is Kaniala. Daniel. Yes. And so that, that's kind of the um, thing with mom, is that hey. she gave me his name yeah. for my middle name. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, Kaniala. Good. That's good. And everybody, you know, as soon as you hear the way they call it, they say the name, Kaniala. <laughs> I, I knew it had to be him somewhere nearby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, now, what, what happens in Papa Kalea now? And what, what's, other than being in town, what makes that so special? Because everyone says it is. All right, so. As here, here, of all of the homesteads, that, <laughs> that's so special. So, so here's something interesting, is um, I am a fourth generation Hawaiian homesteader. My, my, my mom is third. Um, with that being said, that means that we have been neighbors with our neighbors for Ever. Yes. Who's our relatives? We know everything about them and so and so and and we're re related just about in <laughs> everybody. Everybody every other house in every direction from our house is our relatives. It's either my my grandfathers, you know, brothers or sisters or um grannies. Um, you know, or mom or, or somebody. So yeah, and, and you know, so we're we're kinda we're a very close knit community. We're we're an old community. We we've, we've been doing things for a while. Mm. Um the good thing about our community that I love is that you know, we're, we're still family. You know, we, we still help each other when people need help. You well, know? we need to take a break. And when we come back, you'll tell us more about Papa Kalea. That's great. Thank you. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Winston Welch, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at Think Tech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on Think Tech Live. It's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed. And uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later. And aloha. Aloha. I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stanley Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha.
Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey all the way up to the top of the mountain to Papakaleo, which, of course, most of you have no idea of where it is, except mm -hmm. if you've driven up to get lost on your way up to Punch Bowl, then you see the sign on the side of the mm -hmm. road that says Papakaleo. Mm -hmm. So, tell me, can everybody, anybody come up to Papakaleo, or is it just Hawaiians? To live there? No, well, to visit. To visit. Oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's open to the public, totally. Um, you know, we, it's, it's um, interesting because we have um, kind of a two ways in and out. Um, when, when, like you mentioned, uh, when you come up through, um, through Papakolea from the front, you'll actually come in through the entrance to the uh, Cemetery of the Pacific or Punch Bowl. Yeah. And um, that's where everybody kind of knows of. But if you follow that road um, all the way up, it, it goes from, oh, um, it turns into to Tantalus Drive, and it goes all the way all up the to man? the back. Yeah. yeah. So it, it'll actually to take you all the way up to Round Top. Oh, really? I know. Oh, so that's, yes, of course, when you come around the back way. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. And so for uh, us, yeah. It's a rich us, neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> up you, the road. You're rich neighbors. Up the road, yes. Up the road. Yeah. And of course, we have a lot of limousines that go through every evening yeah. because those are the tourists that go up to, to the Tantalus Lookout to oversee, like, uh, Waikiki and Ala Moana. Oh, sometimes oh, they have a little. Oh, I thought maybe the tourists were coming to see the natives. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Unless they're invited. Unless yeah. they're invited, okay. Um, yeah. So, um, what was it like before, you know, that got to be just overwhelmed with the city being like this? What was it like in the early days of being in Hawaii? Uh, well, I only know from the 50s. But, okay. Yeah, because that's where I was raised around that time. And at Papakolea Park, we did some special events certain times of the year, and sometimes we would serenade uh, the tourists. I will say howly because that's what they always say. Yeah, that's <laughs> what the tourists. And I guess it, it, even hanging around Punchbowl and seeing the buses and wave when we were little, me and my friends and my cousins, uh, <laughs> um, we had our own little childhood craziness, picking the fruits from the, the hedges, you know, that's outside. You know. Um, checking out the views and pointing out who we know, what we know, and stuff like that. Other than that, I don't know how well other kids did their time, but I always had a few handful. And well, now you said uh, Tutu spoke Hawaiian. Do you speak Hawaiian? No. Nope. Or just pigeon? No. Nope. My dad didn't want us to learn. Oh. Because then him and Tutu can't talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, then we all gonna know what they're talking about. And from what I was told by my older cousins, Tutu had a bad mouth. Oh. She, she talked in Hawaiian, but she talked in Hawaiian cr you know, curses. Uh, you know. So, swear words in Hawaiian. Yeah. Figure that out. Okay. We have to go, what the heck did she say? My father always had to do this to us, eh? <laughs> so Which meant beat it. Yeah. So, as, as a child, though, but you were in foster homes. Yeah, my third oldest sister um, was around 13, 14. And she must have had a rheumatic heart problem when she was born. I late, I, I've been reading um, articles on heart problems when they're little or born with a heart you know, oh, condition. That's too bad. And I'm thinking, oh, my sister had went through that. But at the same time, what she was going through, my mom was carrying me. So I, I'm amazing, lucky that you know, her, her health could have gone really bad. Things, now that I, what I know I, I'm reading about now in, on mm -hmm. computer, you know. Like, so, wow. Now, what did they do to get you back? Uh, my mom had to put papers in to um, bring me back and whatever reason. But the, the lady that worked with her, social services as well as other, other people, um, they really had a very soft heart because they really worked hard. 
and my sisters above me, well, my two baby sisters, well, they, they, were, they did what they did. But my dad and my brothers, well, my dad tried to have my brothers around, but my sisters, we, we all kind of helped my mom, you know, just take care and make a family thing right. out of this. But we lived in a one-room shack about the size of this room, in the outdoor plumbing, we had a cold water shower. We, had, we still have the tree to this day, still growing. That was our toilet. And so I was so amazed that I went up to um, my sister's house for something. And she said, Em, did we ever ask you if we still had the tree, the monkey pod tree? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah. He, she says, how come? I said, because they used to swing. They had a rope with a tire, and they used to swing, and the hill go down. So you platform here and you swing out. And you do what you do and you swing back in. <laughs> I don't know what they do. <laughs> oh, weird kids. And they were older than me. So by the time I came, I wasn't sure what people were doing, but um, social services got into the picture and saw what my mom had to deal with. And, uh, yeah, my father wasn't an employed person. He did things in seasons. <laughs> he, he was a right. Uh, in seasons. I don't know if it goes way back to the right brothers, but <laughs> <laughs> even that, you know, my uncle, my dad's youngest brother was in the service for a long time. Can I tell that? Yes. Okay. And um, <laughs> I, he's my caregiver now. I, I want to listen. I want to be good, good mommy. Good girl. Good and mom. so, we had a family reunion, and Uncle Gilbert, who's the, my, bro, my dad's younger brother, was in the Army for all his life. He came home, and he shared this with our reunion gang, and we couldn't believe it. He says, uh, you folks think we're related to the brothers, the right brothers? And we all look at him like, yeah. And he goes, no, we're related to the sister. <laughs> I know, and we all cracked up <laughs> laughing. In fact, some of my aunties might have peed in their pants. Well, but it was like the biggest joke ever of the whole night. <laughs> and he was serious. He got back on that microphone and he told us, yeah, you guys think what you like think, but you know what? We are related to the sister of the Wright brothers. And you want to hear something else? He tells everybody. She flew the plane first. <laughs> And we all look at him like, oh, Uncle, come on. Yeah. You, you, you got us. He got us 100% with the first two. Now mm. you're bringing this one in and you're trying to, what? And it gets to hang ourselves. And I just like, oh my gosh. But you know, my older cousins and everybody else was just, they just couldn't believe it. Uncle, you for real? And he said, I never take one, one shot of drink yet. Because <laughs> I'm going to be sober when I tell you guys this. You guys had better listen. And then call your kids away. Tell all his brothers and sisters. Hey, call my damn kids away. I'm like, oh, remember this. And then, well, I don't know, the brothers, they do the old thing. Yeah, so that, that's kind of been, <laughs> since, since our family reunion in 93, that's kind of been the joke with our family is that, you know, my mom will say related. that we're, we're related to the sister, and okay. she was the one that actually flew the plane, the plane first. first yeah. When they saw that it worked, they said, okay, get out. Get in, get in, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the bottom line is this, for everybody out there, I'm related to the brothers. Why do we have to pay for tickets to fly anywhere? <laughs> yes, that's always my question, is it right? Think about that anyway. I was wondering, how come we have to catch the boat? <laughs> pay for the boat. We, I... I took the ferry. First time I ever saw articles, you know, advertisement on the ferry. I said, oh, wow, I got to do this thing. Take the ferry to Maui. Yes. <laughs> the super ferry. And yes. I said, whoa, that is awesome. It my is. friend, I cannot <laughs> ever get her to do any kind of boat ride. And she's in Maui. So I get, I, you know, we had little, you know, little phones you could talk from. And, uh, and so got to her. And she met me down at the harbor, and she's like, Ine, she always called me Ine, Ine, hey, you babe, bug are you? And, uh, <laughs> she's Filipino, Spanish. Yeah. Maybe a little bit Chinese in her. We're not sure, but 
<laughs> There's a That's lot of things in her. <laughs> and uh, and she was, oh my gosh. She would tell stuff, everybody would jump, jump, you know. <laughs> Except for me. When she did that to me, I thought, what? <laughs> That's my um, my Tita A side. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of the ferry, we were had tickets, and we were in line to get on the ferry. Mm -hmm. At the minute they shut it down. Wow! Oh, wow! For good? Yes. <gasps> and here we are, paid for the tickets, and we're standing there at the dock. Oh, <laughs> and it's like it's over. Oh, that yeah, that, oh, that was a short wow. run, but that was uh, yes. But mom had fun when she did it. I did it three times, or two times, yeah, taking yeah. the ferry to Maui, only to Maui and back. Yeah. It was awesome. Oh, I so, well, you know, we did, uh, the first time, they, as guests, they showed us around the harbor mm -hmm. and what have you. But for a real trip, we had to buy the tickets, and we're standing there in line, waiting to get on, and they shut it down. Like, oh, wow. Oh. No, we didn't get our money back either. Yeah. Yeah, no. Sorry to hear about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll go get a lawyer. We'll go bring that up. <laughs> We're going to owe some of Hawaii. I don't yes. know what. Oh, boy. Oh, so what are you doing now? now? What are you doing I'm retired. Now? I was working with the state. I can't tell you where yet. That's okay. It's not a no, secret. You can. Yeah. I worked with Department of Accounting and General Services for 26 years, and then I worked with the public work, recreational parks and recreational stuff for uh, five years. Oh gosh, am I forgetting something anyway? See how far? It's been a long time. <laughs> but I, I did clerical work. I learned how to work the computer, which was so awesome. <laughs> when they tell me, can you still, um, you know, overtime and stuff. I said, yeah, get on the computer. And then one day they caught me sleeping by the computer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and they asked me to retire. Oh, okay. It was either or. Either or. All so right. my, my union re said, retire. You retire. got the years. Okay. Said, she, she, she did good. She put in her time, definitely. Yeah. Well, we have run out of time. Oh. And so you will come back and talk stories some more with us, won't you? Check with my caregiver. <laughs> sure. Sure. We'd okay. love to have her. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Well, thank <laughs> you. This has been a real pleasure. Yeah. And so the next time I see the sign, I'm going to drive right through instead of stopping there. Yeah, and be sure to wave because wave. everybody's very friendly. You, yes. know, you can wave at us. We'll wave back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Oh.